Hey, say what you want about the Baltimore Ravens. This is a move that I highly doubted they would do, even though I certainly wouldn't have minded and certainly don't mind it. But I just thought the Baltimore Ravens were going to stay content at the backup QB position. I thought they were just going to roll with Josh Johnson and roll with Devin Leary and leave it at that. But this is how you know the Baltimore Ravens, they be listening to y'all. They really do. Because we watched the backup QB play in week one of the preseason. A lot of Ravens fans were like, oh. We watched the backup QB play in week two of the preseason. And Ravens fans were like, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not so bad, but still. And then we watched the backup QB play in week three of the preseason. And Ravens fans, all three weeks, they've been calling for Snoop back. And a lot of Ravens fans, they need to appreciate Tyler Huntley a lot more than we did before. A whole lot more than we did before. Because I remember seeing so many comments, so many this, that, and a third about Tyler Huntley. But now, when you watch Josh Johnson, you watch Devin Leary, you're like, oh, I want that old thing back. So Tyler Huntley is coming back to the Baltimore Ravens. Let's read the report from our guy Jordan Schultz. He said, breaking, former Pro Bowl QB. And you got to put that on there because Tyler Huntley is a Pro Bowl quarterback. But former Pro Bowl QB Tyler Snoop Huntley, it's always kind of like, Almost cringy when they when they throw in the Snoop in between Tyler and Huntley. Like that's his nickname, but when they say Tyler Snoop Huntley, I just ugh, just, just say Snoop. But I, I, you gotta say his whole name. But they, when they throw that in there, it's just ugh. But anyway, Tyler Snoop Huntley uh, is expected to sign with the Baltimore Ravens per multiple sources of reunion alongside Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. Look at y'all, Ravens. Look at y'all like listening to the fans, like taking what we got to say into account. We certainly appreciate it. We love that. But seriously, the thing that I appreciate about this the most is that the Baltimore Ravens, they were not content. They were not settling. They were not just going to be like, oh, you know what? Mm, uh, we'll roll what we got. And that's, that's what I expected them to do this whole time. I even when there were reports that Tyler Huntley, he was not going to be the backup QB or one of the backup QBs for the Browns and he could possibly be released. I didn't think the Ravens were going to do it. I really didn't. Even once he got released, I still didn't think the Ravens were going to do it. I didn't. I thought they were going to just sit there and be like, nope, we got it all figured out. But I appreciate this because this shows that. And, and I know a lot of Ravens fans are like, man, we the only team that's out here tripping over a backup quarterback. Why are we tripping over a backup quarterback? He's not even going to play anyway. And yes, we get that. But still, you want to be as good as you can possibly be. Now, while Tyler Huntley is no Lamar Jackson, we cannot expect him to be. It's not fair if you expect him to be either. Tyler Huntley still is a better option than Devin Leary. And he got a lot more experience, obviously. And then he also, in my eyes, he's a better option than Josh Johnson. So Tyler Huntley, look, <laughs> you get to come back. You don't get your own number, though. That number two that you had before, that's gone. That's Nate Wiggins. And Nate Wiggins ain't giving that up for you, my friend. I'm sorry. So we're going to have to get used to seeing Tyler Huntley in a different jersey. Now, um, at the time of this recording, it is not said whether Tyler Huntley is going to be on the practice squad or he's going to be, oh, never mind. It literally just came out, like literally just now. Jess Rebick just tweeted it. He said, Ravens are re-signing quarterback Tyler Huntley to their practice squad sources. Say they had an open spot. There we go. There we go. The open spot goes to Tyler Huntley. Now, what do you do? And what I mean when I say what do you do with Devin Leary? Do you keep him there? Or do you release him? I think, in my opinion, I think it depends on who comes available and what you're trying to do with this team. We know the Baltimore Ravens were interested in Lawrence Guy. They brought him in for a visit the other day. How that visit went, no clue. Didn't hear anything about it. But if you decide, hey, you know what, Lawrence Guy, we want to bring you on our team. I would think, well, really, whoever, whatever the next move they decide to do, whoever they end up bringing to the practice squad next, I would think the first person that they'll look at to release would be Devin Leary just because of the numbers game if you got two quarterbacks on the practice squad and Tyler Huntley would obviously be the one that you would go with out of the two you're gonna look to him first to release a spot so you could bring somebody on um, but anyway I, I really do appreciate the Baltimore Ravens for making this move because again we we always talk about and this is different than it's different but still we always talk about how on defense, the Baltimore Ravens, they just get loaded up with depth everywhere. 
They do it all the time. Um, and it could be whatever position. It does not matter. They will be loaded with depth and some quality depth to it. But, um, but on offense, you can't always say the same thing. Um, again, this is different because it's the quarterback position. So it's like way different, but still. Uh, I really do like this move from uh, Baltimore Ravens because they're – they're being reactive. I wouldn't call it proactive, but I guess it's a little bit of both because they could have. No, no, it's reactive because you saw the play of the backup quarterbacks and you were like, no, we're not doing this. This is not. <laughs> in my body, it ain't no offense to none of those guys. Those guys are in the league. I'm not. I'm sitting here in a chair talking about those guys. So they got it. They got it for sure. But. Ravens, bottom line, good job. So before we get into the latest news going on with the Baltimore Ravens, I got to apologize to y'all team, keep it clean, because we dropped a 40-minute video on y'all yesterday. And I know when you look and see 40 minutes, it's like, whoa, what, like, what is going on here? Now, we did have a lot to say about Eric DaCosta and his press conference, and then with questions from subscribers, boy, they, they were y'all asking some fire questions yesterday, so we couldn't just be like, okay, this is the answer, boom, 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 that's it. No, we had to go into super detail, but... 40 minutes, I know that was a lot. So my apologies. Even though we got a special interview coming up in a couple of days that's going to be a little less than an hour and a half long. But again, it's a very, very long interview, but it's great and it's filled with a lot of, it's a very special interview too, but it's filled with a lot of great nuggets in there, some stuff that you get to learn about one of our favorite players, but we'll get to that in a couple of days. But I just wanted to come on here and apologize to y'all. The Baltimore Ravens, they signed a defensive end slash outside linebacker, but it's not Lawrence Guy. Um, it's a guy named Adadeo uh, Odalei. And he is, he used to play for the Houston Texans. He had been on their practice squad uh, for the past couple of years. Uh, and Jeff Rebick said the following, he is Nigerian born. Um, so he would slot into the international player slot on the Ravens practice squad. So he said that's, that allows your practice squad to grow from 16 to 17. Uh, and that the Ravens still having an opening to add another player if they, or actually when they choose. Not if they choose, but when they choose. Because you know they're going to fill that practice squad out. So before it was David Ajabo that was taking up the international player spot. But that was when the roster was at 90 men. Well, really at 91 men. But now with it being at 53 men and the practice squad sets being at 16 men, then this allows the practice squad to be at 17 since he's on the international player spot. He is, um, he is very raw. I was watching an interview of his because uh, he hasn't gotten no like play time in a regular season yet, um, but he is very raw. Uh, he's somebody that uh, he is originally from UK. Um, he said that when he was growing up, he was like bigger than everybody else. Uh, but he got approached at like 17, 18 uh, by the international uh, part of the NFL. And it was like, we, we think you could make it in the league. Like so they were scouting him from a long time. You know how scouts be. They they scout you from when you're young. They they see that potential. They say, oh yeah, we're gonna be all over that. But they were scouting him from when he was young, and they told him that they felt like he had a chance to make it. And obviously, a couple of years later, he made it. But he said around like 17, 18, that's when he really like changed his mindset and really started taking uh, American football uh, a lot more serious. And he really honed in on that. Said he even went to Germany uh, to go play against better competition when it came to American football. And then, of course, yeah, he, he joined the Texans a couple years later. And now the Baltimore Ravens got him on their practice squad. I think, in my opinion, um, the Baltimore Ravens are viewing him as a project. It's, it's, it's a low risk, potential high reward. Uh, because, again, he st it, it reminds me a lot of. Not the exact same, but it reminds me of Adafe Away. Again, somebody who started getting into football a little bit later. Uh, so they're a bit raw. And now the Ravens, they see that potential. And they're like, you know what? We're going to take a shot on this guy. We're going to take a shot on this guy because we see where he could possibly go. Maybe we could bring him in, teach him some stuff, show him the ropes and whatnot. And then this thing could blossom into something special. So we'll see what happens. This should be fun seeing how this whole thing, how, how, how they keep him around and how they involve him. And if they can really develop him, then this could be a diamond in the rough. Now, Tyus Bowser, who had recently visited with the Dallas Cowboys a couple of days ago, and apparently they said that he was a little further away from being ready to play. Mike McDonald said, no, 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 no. I can fix him. 
I know Tyus Bowser. I'm familiar with Tyus Bowser. And he can come join me and my Seattle Seahawks. Because Mike McDonald and the Seattle Seahawks, they signed Tyus Bowser to their practice squad. So this is great uh, for Tyus Bowser. This is nice for him. Um, what happened with him with the ball toward the end of his career with the Baltimore Ravens? I have no clue. I have no clue. I, I just, I don't know. I really don't. Um, but I am happy for him that he's getting another opportunity now. And with the Seattle Seahawks, with them signing him to the practice squad, this is such a low risk move for such a versatile player. Cause you know, Tyus Bowser, he's a good pass rusher. He could drop back and cover. He can do a lot of different things. But the only thing with him is being healthy. He's getting a clean bill of health, clean slate of health, and hopefully he has that now. But again, best case scenario, this works out. You call in Tyus Bowser up to the game day roster, and then you use your three call-ups, then you get him on the active roster. Or oh, worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, then he's on a practice squad, very low risk, low salary, and then you cut your ties. Now, this is unfortunate because I knew it was unlikely that Hollywood was going to play, but now it's official. Andy Reid did say that week one against the Chiefs, Ravens taking on the Chiefs, that Hollywood Brown will not play uh, in that game uh, due to his injury. Um, so it is what it is, uh, but with Hollywood, while I was looking forward to it, it's going to be part of not a, not a revenge game at all because it ain't no like beef with Hollywood and the Ravens. He wanted to be traded. They said, okay, cool. We'll trade you. We're going to see you. Uh, but I, I was, it's always fun like when the Baltimore Ravens go up against players that really have made a big impact for them while they were on the team. But for Hollywood, we may not see him now in week one, but we'll see him down the road. And a nice story came from the presser today because, like, that that's when you know you, like, made it, made it. You ain't just, like, hanging around, but you made it, made it because they had, after practice today, Mark Andrews spoke. Shout out to Mark Andrews because he's back. Tyler Linderbaum, he's also back as well, and both of them were practicing, so that is just amazing. So shout out to the both of them. But they had an undrafted rookie free agent, Bo Braid, speaking at the presser. Like, when do they do that? Like, because he, the thing, and, and that's how you know, in, in my opinion, that the Baltimore Ravens, they really, really respect him and respect his game and got some high hopes for him. They really do. Because he's not your first safety. He's not one of your first safeties because you got two first safeties, Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton. He's not your second safety because you got Eddie Jackson. Unless, hey, Ravens, unless you, you got something to tell us, but... Like, he, he got so much that's in front of him, but the Baltimore Ravens said, no, Bo, you go speak at today's presser. You tell the people how you feel. You show, I, I, when I saw that, I said, wow, that's a lot. Because they don't just trot anybody up at these pressers. Now, we do get to hear from a lot of different Baltimore Ravens, but they don't just trot at each and everybody up. And that's no offense to anybody else, of course. But they do things strategically. And with Bo Bray speaking to that, I was, oh, okay now. And I loved his story too. I, I loved it because he talked about how um, after the Green Bay Packers game, I believe, he said Eric DaCosta came up to him and said, you had a good preseason. He said, well, thank you. And, um, and I think, uh, oh, what did he say? But, but, but bottom line, Eric DaCosta had ended up telling him that you made the roster. You made the 53-man roster. He said he was happy. He shook his hand, gave him a hug. As expected, because that's, that's like big. That, that's huge. Because, again, I was somebody who I didn't think he was going to make the 53-man roster, not because he wasn't capable, not because he didn't have the ability, but just simply because of the numbers game at the safety position for the Ravens. But he, they had safeties already. They signed multiple veteran safeties. They signed multiple veteran safeties. And they even drafted a safety, and he still made it. He still made it. That says something to me about Bo, Bo Braid. Well, that, that he got it, he got it, and the Ravens like they really believe in him. So I, I really hope that this works out like crazy for him. I really, really do. But then he talked about how he he called his parents up once he got home, or well, he told his parents once he got home, and he said they started crying. Yeah, they started crying. So I said, man, shout out to Bo, man. I I really got high hopes for him. I I really um 
I, I just I hope he goes off like crazy. <laughs> this should be a fun one. Shout out to my guy Keontae, who's a team keep it clean patron. He's at the following Colorado just made me believe in the Baltimore Ravens O line ten times more. That offensive line is completely new and only allowed one sack on over thirty pass attempts and opened some nice holes. Hey, there we hey, there's a chance. Like, look, with Baltimore Ravens, it's not that their old offensive line we expect them to be so bad, but it's just the, the word that we've been using with them is unknown. It's very risky, but it's unknown. We don't know if it's going to be great. We don't know if it's going to be terrible. We don't know if they're going to be I. Right. We don't know if they're going to be you know, just enough to get by. We don't know, but that, that makes the possibilities endless. Hopefully, the possibilities are positive, but we'll see in less than a week. That's crazy. He said, I know it's college and NFL. You cannot really compare, but it got me hype. Good. It should We'll see you on Thursday. He said, my question, though, is why Jalen Armour Davis over Pepe Williams? Well, Jalen Armour Davis, Jalen Armour Davis, excuse me, he had looked really good this preseason consistently throughout every game that he played. With Pepe Williams, he looked good in the first game. He looked good in the second game. But then that third game, it was like, oof. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know. But I'm assuming maybe the Baltimore Ravens were like, look, we drafted Nate Wiggins. We drafted TJ Tampa. Those guys are going to make the roster. We got another spot, but it's only going to one of you because they drafted Jalen Armour Davis and Pepe Williams in the same draft. Remember, they doubled down at the cornerback position, but both of them have been missing time due to injury, so they, they were out a lot. So maybe this year, Ravens are like, look, we ain't keeping both. This spot is going to one or the other. We're going to see who performs the best in practice and in preseason. That ended up being Jalen Armour Davis. So uh, anyway, continuing, he said they lined Pepe up everywhere and he held his own other than that Packers. Game. Oh, see, I should have just got rated because he got it. But I think that was it. That was it. In my, my opinion, what I think. But anyway, he said um, and he held his own other than that Packers game. I feel like Jalen Armour Davis earlier had more negative plays than positive and was only at outside corner where we are pretty stacked, in my opinion. I don't know, but Pepe not even making it on a practice squad is a little crazy to me. Again, yeah, maybe Ravens, they, they saw something that we didn't. Maybe maybe they didn't see something that we didn't. Um, with, with, with Pepe, it could have been somewhere. Because, again, we see all the games, but they see practice. So it could have been something. That, it it could have been a But I, I do really do truly believe that's a really good point that you made, though, about the fact that uh, Pepe Williams was lining up everywhere. And they had him blitzing and whatnot, too. So they were showing that versatility. They even had him at, at, at punt and kick re punt return, excuse me. Now, I wonder, thinking back at it now, because we know preseason is not just your opportunity to put on for your team. It's, it's your opportunity to put on for the 31 other teams in the league, too. I wonder if they were trying Pepe Williams back there at punt return for everybody else, for other teams to see. I wonder if they already had the, the, the feeling like, you know what, we're going with Jalen Armour Davis. But, Pepe, we're going to really try to put you on. We're going to really try to put a spotlight on you to show everything that you can possibly do. I wonder if that was the reason. 